All right, guys, before we get into the video, I want to do this really quickly. I just want to let you know that this thing, first of all, does not come with the sharpener. This is something you got to buy separately, and it costs like 13 bucks or something like that. But without this, you're not going to be able to get the knife as sharp. I'll tell you why. Because, all right, it comes in this box, by the way. It has another box on top of it, but this is where you store it. This is basically where the little sharpening block goes. It goes right here, and the roller goes right here at the bottom. And then your extra two plates, the whetstone and the ceramic, go right here in these slots. Anyways, so when you sharpen a knife, what you got to realize is that, um, first of all, I got to explain that it has four angles. Uh, you could read what they say right there, because here you go. That's, what the, that's what the, the recommendations of what kind of knives to use for it. So whatever side has the angle on it, that's the side you're going to stick it on. It's not like whatever side's facing you, like, oh, like if I stick it right here, it's 20 degree. No, it's whatever side you stick it on, because I've seen some comments saying things like that. So let's say I put it on a 15. So when you start sharpening it, you're basically grinding on one side of it. And once that side gets that angle perfectly, a little wire forms that curves over to this side, and you can feel it. It's called a burr. You can feel it when you go like this on the opposite side, like, oh, damn, something's there. Almost feel like you're getting scratched by someone's freshly cut fingernails. And that's what this thing is for. Once you're done, even with the finest one, the ceramic 3000, there's still going to be a tiny microscopic wire on there. And so this is what you rub it on at the end to remove that wire and reveal the fully sharpened edge that you sharpened. It doesn't sharpen it anymore. This just knocks off the wire. So you're not going to get anything nearly as sharp as you would if you don't have this thing, which kind of sucks. You should at least include a small one in there. All right, next thing I want to talk about is being light with your passes. You got to you got to be light with it. You got to you got to not be in there. I'm not going to go on the first one cuz I'm not sharpening just yet, but you got to be like this light. You don't want to go in there hella rubbing on it like this trying to get it go fast. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So, that's this is just stuff I figured out from from using it for a couple I think for a month now. Okay, another thing I want to talk about is if you don't know the angle of your knife, what you can do is you can draw on the very edge of it with the Sharpie. So if you see that right there, that's the edge. Check it out. You get a Sharpie and you draw on it. And that's drawn just on the very edge. Check it out. So when you check out the angle, you can try every single one of them. And if you have the right one, then it will remove every single amount of that Sharpie. If it's the wrong angle, then it won't remove all of it. So as you can see, obviously it's not sharpened, so you can't tell as well, but there's a little bit on the top and a little bit at the bottom right there, meaning that it's removing it right in the middle, meaning that it's the perfect one. So another thing is if it's an older knife, let's say for me, example, a kitchen knife that my mom was using, she would rub on it with the with a big old stone. She'd be like mm, 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 trying to sharpen it both sides. That gives it an inconsistent angle so you're not going to have an angle at all. You're not even going to have an edge, probably. I mean, that knife looked really wonky. I'll go get it right now. Now, I'm no expert, but check this out. This is like some volcanic rock that she was rubbing it with. And as you can tell, this gives it... I've sharpened it a couple times now, but like, check this out. It starts off here, and then it divots down. That's because of so much that she was like, just going like this to it. And it didn't have an, a consistent angle. Obviously, now it does because like, I took a long time to hit it there. And it's kind of mere polished a little bit. Maybe not, maybe not as much on top, but yeah. Anyways, so for those kinds of knives, if you mess them up, I'm not kidding you. Even on the on the one that's supposed to take a lot of metal off, the first one, the 360. These are magnetic, by the way. If I could take this off, it took around over 300 passes. And when I mean by a pass, I mean like this, like like this is like one, two, 300 of those to even get that little wire on the side that you feel. My camera's out of focus. I'm trying to get this camera to focus. Anyways, next thing is that you gotta realize that my camera sucks, dude. Okay, you gotta realize that when you put less degrees, it takes longer to sharpen. So, if you, if you put on 15 degrees, it's gonna take longer to sharpen than if you put on 25 degrees. Why? Because when you're sharpening at 15 degrees, it's more like closer to standing straight up. So it's going to take longer to shave it off. If, if it's like 25 degrees, then it's more like this. So it's getting more shaved off quicker. So that's one thing. 
Also, less degrees equal sharper. When you got something 25 degrees, it's more of something for splitting, like something for hacking at bone and something. 15 degrees is something for slicing super sharp things. That's when Ray does all of his tricks, like the paper standing up and he cuts a hole out of it, or the splitting one hair. I'll try to do that stuff for you guys, because this one I will sharpen to 15. And also, something about the quality of this, the whetstone plate, this is the, the whetstone 1000 plate, when it came it was not a, like perfectly flat, all these other ones are perfectly flat, this is ceramic so of course it's perfectly flat, look at that, but this one wasn't, and I think that might affect the performance because I didn't realize that until a while because it felt super rough, it felt more like a, it felt more like, a, what's it called, like clay or something, it didn't really feel super smooth or anything because it's supposed to be like this is the least smooth one then this is the next smoothest one then this one then this is the smoothest one and then this one really didn't feel all that smoother than this one now it does but I'll tell you how I did it I basically put this one on top the 600 diamond one or the other one whichever you want and I just rubbed it on there like this until it flattened basically it just took off a bunch of rock and now it feels pretty flat but I'm just letting you know, if this one doesn't do anything because it's bad quality, then this one isn't going to do anything because you need this one to sharpen it first. It's just basically going to be as good as the, the 600 one. So, I haven't tested that. I might test it out with this 15 degree one, see like, oh, how much sharper does it get with these two than with this one? Maybe not. I don't have a sharpness, a sharpness scale though. So, I haven't been able to get as good results as Ray. And by that, I mean like two things. First of all, I haven't been able to do that thing where he stands up the paper and cuts a hole out of it. And, yeah, so it might be because he also puts this green stuff on the strop, which you can buy, and it's like like this little diamond compound, and like it has a, like some f diamond flakes in there, and what that basically does is it, it takes off even an, another little tiny bit of metal, not as, m it, it takes off less metal than this ceramic one, so that's a little bit, but it gets it slightly sharper, and it makes a difference, so maybe that's it, or it could just be the the weird quality with this whetstone plate that I'm not sure what's up with it that being said I'm gonna be sharpening two knives all the way on both ends of the spectrum I'm gonna be sharpening this knife which is a kitchen knife at 15 degrees which is the sharpest and and I'm gonna be sharpening this massive Bowie knife at 25 degrees because like I did I did the little edge that it came with it's not sharp at all right now so you don't feel anything and yeah I drew on it with a sharpie and it turns out I had 25 degrees so on the other end of the spectrum so this won't be as sharp but this is really heavy so it's meant for like like cutting stuff like chopping stuff so let's get right into it we're gonna start with this one alright see y'all all right, so we're going to get right into sharpening, so check it out. I like to have a nice little flat surface to sharpen on, just a preference, just to, you know. So let's get this out, and like I said, we're going to stick this on to the 15-degree uh, side, and we're going to get right into it. All right, make sure everything is nice and flat, and let's go ahead and get rolling. So we're going to start off, obviously, on the thicker side, and we're just going to keep going. So I'm not sure exactly what it is, but for some reason, I'm getting this little thing. So like I said, when you finish sharpening one side, you'll be able to run your finger along and feel like this little scratchiness from it. And for some reason, I'm getting it all on here, not on the back of here, no matter how much I keep scrubbing, and then not on the this area right here. So I'm not sure what's going on, but we're just going to try the other side, see if we can get it. And, the same thing on the other side. So once you feel that little scratchiness, you just, that's when you know you gotta switch over to the other side and just start doing the other side. So we're gonna start doing the other side. I'm not sure if these plates run out because he does sell replacements of the first two. So maybe they get weaker as time goes on. So who knows? So let's gonna keep, we're gonna keep going and see how this goes. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so believe it or not, after almost no passes, I already feel the the wire on this side. The wire on this side is very, very noticeable. So, that's a good thing. What I'm not so sure about is why it won't show up on the other side if we're basically doing the exact same thing. That's... Your guess is as good as mine on that one. Unless this angle thing isn't consistent. Because if the angle is not straight across the whole thing, that's just faulty, manufact faulty manufacturing, and that would not be good at all. So, yeah, let's keep going. I'm going to go on the other side see if I can get a more consistent wire thing, burr thing on it, on the whole thing. Because otherwise, it's kind of useless. Okay, so now I have a consistent one on both sides. This feels a lot better than the first time. So, as a tip, it might be better going over both sides. That's, like, you go over one side a little bit. Then go over the next side and go over the next side until one pops up. Then once it pops up good, you do the other side and make sure it pops up good. So, all right. Here's the thing. The first plate is the one that takes the longest. So, from here on out, it should be pretty smooth sailing. So, let's now stick it back on the original side. Actually, other side because we just finished doing this side. You always want to not do the same side twice. All right. Make sure you feel that. Yep, that's the right side. And now we're going to switch over to the Diamond Plate 600. Alright, so, like I said, it didn't take long on the 600, but now I feel the little wire again. So, we're going to do this. And I flip it over to the other side and try to get the same wire. Simple as that. This one doesn't take that long. So just try not to get too impatient with the first side because it takes forever. Like I said, this one almost brand new and it's taking forever. Maybe it didn't have an exact 15 angle. That's probably what it was, honestly. <laughs> Okay, now we have finished both of these. Now I feel it again. One thing I have to note, though, is this, uh, the side I start on this side, the one I'm grinding on on this side, feels a lot, like it looks a lot more grinded on than the other side. So, it looks like I've been grinding on one side more than the other, which makes sense because this is the one I started on. So, that's probably another reason to not... Do it all on one side. I don't know if that affects the sharpness. Doesn't make sense that it would, but it might. So, it's something to keep in mind for all you guys. Anyways, regardless, I feel the little wire. So, we're going to go ahead and switch now onto the other one. I said I was going to test out both sides, but I don't feel like you guys have the patience for that. So, we're going to go ahead and unstick these because it has magnets. And we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Alrighty. Let's stick on the this one and then the ceramic one since we don't need the other ones anymore. We're going to start on the whetstone one. Hopefully, like I said, this is what I'm kind of iffy about. But alright. Let's go. Alright, so I feel the tiniest of tiniest things because the little wire is not going to be that big anymore because this thing is so fine. So now we're going to move on to the other side of the knife. Okay, so now I think I feel it on this side as well which is a good thing means that it should be pretty flat because now this thing does not take off enough metal to change the angle entirely so now we are on the very very last one the ceramic one this is the one that's really going to give it that mere 
polished finish and I guess it might be worth blowing at it a bit since this uh, whetstone one is basically just flaking away at your knife. Not flaking away, the knife is flaking away at the at the whetstone plate. So you'd think that'd be the one that lasts the least, but he doesn't sell replacements for this whetstone one, so alright. We're going to move on to this last one, and yeah. Okay, so now I feel ever so slightly the slightest of slightest little burrs on it, so I'm going to guess that is good to go on that side, and this is the last side we're going to be doing. Alright, so now I feel it on the other side too, so we should be done, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick couple tiny light passes, just to kind of start knocking it off a little bit, ever so slightly, like, like I'm barely even passing over it, like I'm just basically baby, baby scratching it, just, just to try to do most of what the, the, the little leather strop should do. Okay, so, now, this is the most important, not the most important part, but like, you know what I'm saying. Now we're just gonna run it across here, at an even pressure. Alright, so if you look at it in the light, it should look... Pretty mere polished. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and leave this here. We're gonna go get some stuff to test it on. Sound cool, right? Alright. Okay, so we're back here. So now we're gonna test out on some stuff. First of all, we of course gotta do the most impressive one of his tests. At least I thought it was pretty impressive. But that is his infamous hair test where you get a tiny little hair. And the knife is sharp enough to cut it. Or at least like like shave it or whatever you want to go. Oh, I just almost stabbed my screen, dude. I need to be careful. So you guys can probably see that. So let's check it out. Look at that. Look at that. It basically chopped it right in half. Look at that. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. You need some paper. I need some white background to take a look at it, right? Oh my, that is still not very visible, is it? But it basically chopped it right in half. It's like hanging on by a thread. Pretty sure if I run it again, it's gonna finish the job for us. Look at that, that is, that is chopped in half, look at that. That is very much in half. That is like, yeah, it's, it's in half. I'm not sure what else I can say. You can see it's folded over on itself. Let's let's try that again, see what we can do again. Okay, let's see here. Really has to catch on the Yeah, that's Yeah, it's chopped, you can see that. It's just hanging on by a little thread there. That is I'd say a success. Again, this depends on your skill too, like if you're not the most skilled sharpen. Oh my god, that, that was perfect. Oh god, that. I guess the bottom is sharper. Maybe. Like I said, it does have to do with your consistency, but. And the quality of the camera, too, right? If I can't even get the angle, because I'm like trying to awkwardly record while doing this, but. It, it looks like it works. At least I'd say so. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely doing what it says. It's just, yeah, look at that. Hold up, let's see that, right there. It chopped it and the other half is on the blade. Look how much I'm holding on to. Hold up, 
yeah, I'm hardly holding on to anything anymore and the other side got chopped off. So I'd say that one's a success. Next one is just how easy it cuts a paper towel. I was gonna show it beforehand. Let's go ahead and turn this camera up a little bit. Okay. I was gonna do this one beforehand, but I forgot, so you know. We all make mistakes. Because paper towel is really flimsy, so it shouldn't Yeah, that's looks pretty sharp to me. That looks pretty sharp. It doesn't it doesn't look as clean as how when he cuts paper towel. It still is ripping a little bit. Like I said, that could be due to the fact that I don't have green stuff on it, or due to the fact that I just, you know, right? Now, I'm not sure how to roll some roll a piece of paper up and stand it on itself, but we're going to try it. Let's just do this. Let's just see if we can take a chunk off. You'd think this wouldn't be as hard as, like, as, like, yeah, it's not going to, I don't think that's going to happen. That's, sometimes he has, like, cuts in his videos, so it makes you, like, think if he's, like, like holding on to it and like then it happens but I mean it cuts into it pretty easily I'll give you that much I'm pretty sure I could probably just fillet this away yeah that's 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 disgusting dude look at that that is disgusting dude that is also just could be that I'm just not very skilled with a knife too that also could be part of it, but that is pretty disgusting sharp. Very much enough for you to like, yeah, if, I run, if you run your finger, you barely even touch it and it already feels like it's going into that first little layer of skin. Not enough to cut you, obviously, because you don't touch it that hard, but yeah, and then mere polished edge too, probably. If you get it at the right angle, you see like, you see that little like how it's uh, reflecting the light. All right, that took a long time. So now let's go ahead and test this one at 25 degree. All right, so I just got done sharpening the Bowie knife. And there's a couple things I gotta say. First of all, it took a ridiculously long amount. Like, let's say, I'm talking like an hour, but we got a pretty good mirror finish as you can see the light reflecting off of it. So the thing that makes it hard to sharpen is that imagine you have a, a zero angle on this thing, standing straight up. The distance to any side of the blade is the same. You always get it same distance. The little thing is always on it. But imagine you're on a 70, a uh, 90 degree angle I mean. This has wider side. Right here is wider than right here. So if you're sharpening, then the distance from here is not as much as to here. So when it's 25 degrees, let's say like like that, once you get to this area, you kind of have to like rotate around to make sure you're getting all of it because otherwise you're just going to slide right off. It's going to be like this. You're touching, you move back, and you're not touching anymore. So that makes it so you have to have one eye closed and kind of rotating around it. So... To sharpen this thing, I kind of would recommend more of a a pull-through sharpener, believe it or not, even though those take a lot of metal off of these, or just someone really good with the whetstone, which is also hard to learn, so I don't know. So we're going to see how good this thing is, because I really do think it's hard when it's a, a knife that has varying uh, height to it, because when it stands like this, and it's angled this way, it's not it's not the same distance you, you put it right here by the time you get here you have to rotate it around to make sure it gets all of that and especially right here this thing this area right here is uh it's, it's, a, it's a lot thinner than, than this is wide so that doesn't how do I show you this that doesn't exactly fit right there you see that so when you get to around this area there's a tiny section in here that isn't sharpened at all so again there you go when it's a pull through sharpener it's like a V pardon if this is kind of Looks like I'm doing something to myself, but no. So it kind of pulls right through, so it doesn't miss any spots. But let's see how good I could get it to. I was able to, I tested out this little area right here, and I was able to like have it not cut a hair, but it is able to just like kind of like 
strip away at it. Also, I was able to shave with it right here, except for on this curved part. This curved part, I was not able to make it shave sharp, just on this part right here that's more straight and a similar height. You're able to nick at your arm. I'm not going to show that because that's too graphic, I believe. But let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty decent, I'd say. Even this little this part right here, as you can tell, this uh this part uh with the the thicker part, the cuts are a little bit. I'll show. I'll give two cuts right here. I'll give the bottom cut right here. Okay, check it out. Check out the difference. So when you take a look at this first cut, this is the the cut with the with the rounded part. That's it has some shavings that are kind of there. But if we look at this one, this one looks a lot more cleaner with less shavings. Either way, I'd say this works on knives that are as straight as possible. Say a cleaver or a santoku knife. Kind of like the one I showed you at the beginning of the video that my mom had. It used to be perfectly straight. Not anymore, but pardon for the laggy camera again, because I know it's kind of laggy. But that's all I can say. Overall, I think this product does what it says. And... I will put a comment in the description if I ever get the green compound that I was talking about for this drop. And thank you very much. That's all for today.